Hi, today we're in Office 365 and I'm going to be showing you how to use the allow and block list in Microsoft Defender to block specific emails from sending to your organization. Let's get right into it. Once you log into your Office 365 account and you're an admin account, go ahead and click on admin to bring you to the admin dashboard center. Once you get to the admin dashboard center, you're going to find some underneath admin centers called security. Go ahead and click on security. Once you get to this page now, like I said, there's going to be about three different ways that you can do this, but Microsoft recommends you using the tenant allow and block list. So that's what I'm going to show you today, but you can also use the anti-spam policies for specific domains. You can also use mail flow rules, but like I said, we're going to show you the tenant allow and block list today. So under email and collaboration, we're going to go down to policies and rules. We're going to click on threat policies. Once it loads up here, we're going to go down to tenant allow and block list, which is right here. Now this is going to be great for if you want to block a certain email address or maybe your domain um, from sending emails to your tenant. So go ahead and click on add and we're going to do block. Then we're going to type in our domain we want to block. Now the email we want to block is this particular email. But in our use case, they're actually sending from a lot of different email addresses with this same domain. So we actually want to block the whole domain. So we're going to go ahead and delete everything in front of it. And we're going to leave just the domain because we want to block everything coming from that domain. And then you can see remove block entry after 30 days is the default. We're going to want to change that to never expire um, because we want this domain to, to be blocked forever, right? We don't want it to um, expire after 30 days. You can add additional notes if you need to in this block but we're not gonna need that, so we're gonna hit add. Now this does take up to one to three hours to take an effect on your tenant. Sometimes it's quicker than others, um, but I just want you to know in case you put this in and you send an email from a test account if you're trying to block something and it still comes through, it does take some time to replicate in Office 365's data centers, so keep that in mind. So that's how you block a domain. Now, if you want to block an email, a full email address, because let's say it's a Gmail address, you know, I'm just going to put in jsmith at gmail.com. You don't want to block the whole domain Gmail because that's going to block every Gmail account. So you want to put in the specific Gmail account like we did here. We're going to select that for never. And now that uh, jsmith at gmail.com email address will be blocked and won't be able to send emails to anybody in your organization. So I'll show you quickly the second way you can do this, which is the anti-spam policies. It's going to be in the same area, email collaboration, policies and rules, and go to threat policies. And then from here, we're going to click on anti-spam under policies. And then once this loads up, we're going to do anti-spam inbound policy. Go ahead and click on that. And we're going to scroll down to where we see edit, allow, and block senders and domains. So you click on that. And then you can see where we can allow and whitelist domains and senders from this area. So if you want to do senders, that's where you go here. If you want to block domains, you can click on here and hit add domain. This is where you can block domains as well. But like I said, the first option that we did is what Microsoft recommends. All right, now for the third option, which is the mail flow rules, we're going to want to go and click on exchange. Once exchange loads up, you're going to go under mail flow and go to rules. In rules, you're going to click on add a new rule and we're gonna do uh, create new rule, and then say uh, block you know, uh, domains. Then we're gonna do apply this rule if the recipient is part of this domain, and we're gonna copy in that domain we wanna block, click on add, and then hit save. So basically, um, apply this rule if the recipient domain is that domain that we just put in there, and do the following. We're gonna select block the message, and do reject the message and include an explanation or we can just uh, delete the message without notifying anyone. So you have a couple different options here of what it's going to say. And then once you have that, then you click next and you're going to enforce. You can actually do a date range and a time range of when this is affected, but we're going to just enforce and activate it and hit next and hit finish. So now this mail flow rule is activated. If it sees this email coming in and it's part of that domain, it will immediately delete it and no one will receive it. Um, so this is the third way to do uh, domain blocking. So one last thing we forgot to modify, as you can see the status is disabled. You have to make sure you click on that and click on enable or disable rule. So make sure that gets enabled and then that rule will get applied when email flow starts coming in. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.